All righty, folks. It is the time you have all been waiting for. A special edition, bringing back the deep diving with the DCs show with the two championship contenders. We got the Green Machine and the Beast. Thank you so much for being here, both of you. Um, first off, like, what are what are your initial thoughts on on being in the championship? Green Machine being the one seed. I'll start with you. Yeah. Um... I think I was picked by a few people preseason. So, you know, it's it's been a it's been a long season, but my team's just kind of ground and ground grounded out and had some good victories, scored put up a bunch of points and, and most people couldn't match it each week. So uh I expect her to be here at the beginning of the year and I'm looking forward to getting it done this week. Boom. All righty. Good initial thought there. Beast, how about you? Thoughts on being in the championship once again. Well, let me first say, Scott, thank you very much for having us on your show. And it's so good to see the best league podcast back. In 100%. Action. It's, it's been a long so, time, but that's a very true statement. Thank you. <laughs> that's right. So uh, uh, Mr. Beast, I think, was a team that most people thought was playoff worthy, but probably not Super Bowl worthy. So I feel very fortunate to be here. I'm really excited that uh, some of these players uh, that are nearing the end uh, fantasy wise, uh, Eckler and, and Derrick Henry and uh, Devonte Adams get another shot to go grab a trophy. So I'm really thrilled to be here. And, uh, and um, like I said, I think this team on paper looked like a playoff team, but not necessarily a Super Bowl team with the way Brendan was going and the way Alex was going. So um, I am super excited to be here, and I can guarantee that this Beast team is going to bring it. And it, it, if it goes down, it's going to be in the fashion of a, of a, of a 190 score. But that's what's going to happen this weekend. That may, could, could be a repeat of a uh, championship with Patrick. But well, hopefully... that's the thing, and that's the other thing about the Beast, is the Beast feel like two years ago we were the favorite going in, and – um, you know, uh, it took Patrick a, a 196 or 198, well, I forget what he had score, yeah, to uh, to knock me off my pedestal. And I feel like this week there, was, and so I kind of feel like a championship was, you know, it was a beast team that that should have, could have won. And I think that one kind of slipped away. Where this year, I this is one that maybe we don't belong here, or we're, we're kind of sliding and in, in the back door, and we're going to go steal one. And so I'm going to get that one that I missed back this weekend. hundred percent. Yeah, no, that's a good deal. And, and I guess you, know, you referenced something um, beast that we'll, we'll, we'll start into, but before we really say dive deep here, did, did you guys bring your swimsuits? I, I want to make sure you, if you brought your swimsuits, then might as well change into them now. Cause we're going to be diving deep scuba equipment included sure if necessary. Did. Yeah. Uh, I'm skinny dipping, man. <laughs> uh -oh. <laughs> that that works too but we'll give everyone a pass me included because it, it's a little cold cold everywhere i'm sure it's colder in new york um well you it, and missouri had snow before new york had, well they've already had snow, just started snowing we here didn't too, have any so. snow and that's something anyways yeah no i think it, i think it's fitting the green machine are are at home they're they're cozy being the one seed they're gonna you know they they get the home court advantage but the but the beasts are are actually on the road they're not they're not home right now so i think that's that's fitting but yes we are on the road <laughs> <laughs> but cool all right so want to talk about the construction of of your rosters you know and and beast you you alluded to maybe this being the last rodeo for for Eckler and Henry, um, you know, you, you have a core group of players that have been around a few years and have um, had a lot of success, but there's also been talk in years past of tearing, tearing things down. Um, and, and, you know, there could be roster turnover, you know, at any given point, but your, your team has continued to perform um, and meet expectations. So do you, what, what are, what are your thoughts on, a, um, how much roster turnover we'll see this offseason and and then kind of tying that into um, 
would it, it how how meaningful it would be uh, for your players such as Eckler and Henry to get to get a championship before they ride off into the sunset? Well, I would think the the last couple of seasons, um, my team was kind of at, at a at a point where it's like either you just leave it alone and go for it, or you do tear it down. Mm -hmm. And I, I just got to ride it. And that's what I did. Um, two years ago, the team was kind of peaking and, and I rode into the Super Bowl and really felt good about that Super Bowl and put up points. And last year it was starting to show a little, some cracks with some of these older players. And this year it was definitely showing some cracks. Uh, Eckler and Henry and Adams have all had like career lows uh, this year, but they still perform now and then. So it was kind of like, uh, I kind of missed my window to break this down and get value from those players. So I just wrote it out and said, well, I might as well take it as far as I can go. And that's what I'm doing. And it's bad. It's resulted in another Super Bowl. So, um, and if, if, uh, these players are back next year, uh, looking at finances, I don't know how many I can keep, but mm -hmm. you know, it, it would be more value probably for me to keep riding that as long as I can. But again, I'm going to have some turnover some way because on paper, uh, I'm just not going to make it under cap. So there's going to be something happening for sure. But, uh, but um, I'm basically going to ride the wheels off of, of Eckler and Henry in particular. And, uh, and that's all I can do. So that's what I'm going to do. No, that makes sense. Yes. But with their contract and age, it, you know, it could be tougher to trade them and, you know, they're too valuable to drop per se. And and so, yeah, if you can afford to keep them and right. keep, keep them on the beast, then that, that makes sense. Right. AB, um, with your, with your roster, what would you say, um, what, what has gotten you to this point more? Would, would you say it's been more through trades, free agency or the draft? Because you know, looking at your team, you, you get a little bit of everything, but is there one of those that kind of puts you over the top, over the top and why you're where you are today? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, it, it really is a true blend on my team. I feel like, um, you know, cause I, I, I have drafted and drafted well recently, kind of a few of my main guys with Hertz and, you know, the Hertz and Hall and Taylor kind of combo. And then, I don't know, it's it's kind of quartered up. And then I still have, uh, you know, Diggs is kind of, I guess, my freestanding, like, free agent guy. And mm -hmm. then um, most of my other, I guess, starting lineup with, like, Barkley and Taylor and Hill, even though I had Hill myself, but those have all been acquired through trade recently. So yep. it, it's kind of turned into more of a blend. I, I think that's just kind of how our league's going to go it's a little bit harder to find like the true gems on the waiver wires now. Um, now that we added like a, two expansion teams and, you know, added effectively like 25, 50 additional roster spots. Um, so I think that I've drafted well recently has really put me to the top, you know, to get those two top five running backs and a top three quarterback you know, in my roster, still trying to draft well for a, a wide receiver, but I, I think I got a good flex one at least in, in Zay Flowers this year. So I'm looking forward to him in the future. Yeah, you have to be excited about Zay. I, you know, to be honest, I, I think some other league members may have felt the same way and that Zay was not, maybe not the real deal based on his size. And and I was skeptical of drafting him, but I think he, he kept falling, if I remember right. And you, you, you snagged him up and he's turned out great for Baltimore. Um, yeah, and un unlike the beast, uh, Dream Machine, you know, your your roster can kind of stay intact for the most part. You know, you made a trade with with the DCs for um getting rid of Nick Chubb, and that that'll help your cap. Um, you know, you traded Cousins, and that that help your cap as well. So, um, do you expect to have the same roster next year, or any any big moves that no, you uh, foresee? Pretty much planning on all those starting guys right now can just roll over to the next year yeah from some bench guys and we'll be back at it that's my goal yeah no fair enough that's 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 good to hear and and ideal so um I have to I have to ask you know I, I think it was earlier today 
um, the Krispy Kreme sports book uh, came out with the with the lines, and um, six and a half points um, in favor of the of the Green Machine. So I'm I'm curious, um, Beast. I'll start with you. A, have you put any money um, on on your team to win the, win it all? And uh, do you agree with the with the line as well? Um. Uh... I I don't bet on the on the uh, uh, with with the the CBK sports book. Uh -huh. um, I always think of who I would bet for, or uh, you know, uh, uh, when I when I do it. But I actually haven't made the bet, so I won't have a bet in there. As far as the line goes, I was actually anticipating a double digit, uh, uh, you know, a ten or twelve point uh, spread. Um, and so to see it at six and a half, that's, that's, you know, I'm like, well, okay. But what I see happening is, is I think things are going to go one way or another in that, um, uh, you know, either, either, uh, uh, uh the green machine is going to kind of come out kind of uh, with a dud this week and the, the beasts are going to roll by 20 or, <laughs> or the green machine is going to roll. And the beast or, and the green machine is going to roll by 20. I, mm -hmm. So the six and a half point spread, I don't really see as anything important. I see this game kind of going like most games in the playoffs have gone uh, double digits one way or the other. But I put it at 50 50. I could be uh, uh, winning this thing by double digits. I think mm -hmm. as, as easily as, uh, as the green machine. So, um, you know, I, the spread didn't come out anything too much different than what I expected, except I expected more of a 10 to 12, but, um, okay. Uh, you know, so that's where I'm at. Nice. That makes sense. Green machine. Did you, uh, do you put any money on, on yourself? No, I'm not wagered. I'll, I'll leave my wager to, uh, you know, my, my winnings to, I guess, be the difference between first and second place, but, uh, that's right. You know, that's that's what I'm working for. No, good deal. Yeah, if I, <laughs> I think earlier in the season, maybe the first time, say week one, two, what whatever it was that CBK Sportsbook put out put out some bets. I I had made a bet, um, but I haven't I haven't done anything since. But then in the semifinal round, uh last thursday so like after the thursday games you know he had updated lines ahead of the saturday matchups and i put twenty dollars on rye bread to win it all Whoa. and i and i <laughs> i told chris yeah. please don't tell ryan i bet on him let's just keep it a secret but <sighs> secrets out i'm gonna admit that uh i lost twenty dollars to the cbk uh sports book because ryan ryan didn't come through Talking bad bet. Yeah, <laughs> bad bet. <laughs> so I'll I'll admit that, but you know what? I'll gladly lose twenty dollars if it means uh Ryan isn't isn't well, successful. <laughs> that's what it was, is it was probably a twenty dollar jinx on the right. You know, yeah. And it worked. Yes. Yeah. There's a win win. Either right. e either I make either I make good profit or Ryan loses. I I don't see a, a lose out of that. So <laughs> yeah well yeah i i wanted to i wanted to ask about lineup decisions so you know alex you're you you historically like to kind of wait you know you know when when the week changes and you know if, if someone wants to look at if, if they were playing you it's like okay who am i going up against a lot of times you have empty slots um can you talk us through your your decision making process? So the, I think you know when I when I looked uh, before the start of the show, your your flex spots were open. Um, what what kind of things do you look for, and um, and and how you decide to start or sit certain players? Yeah, just I don't know. A lot of the trying pair up good matchups with studs or you know, making decisions between that and, or just like good matchups versus guys that have been performing well, mm -hmm. you know, like, I don't know. I've left a few of mine empty this week because of kind of injuries, still trying to figure out who's actually going to be playing. Mm -hmm. You know, I know I have a, like 
multiple tight ends that aren't practicing and I have I think Trevor Lawrence is questionable I have a few like backup quarterbacks that might slide into there and and then it's just like I don't know like one of my guys this week is like Raheem Moster like he's scored like 22 touchdowns this year but he gets to play the Ravens and I I don't know like you know and then it's like could I play Zay Flowers but I'm playing against Lamar Jackson like that's always kind of a you don't know which way to go with that. So, um, yeah. Yeah. Just, I mean, hoping to see some good stuff from Brees Hall tonight and, yeah. uh, you know, that'll kind of influence, you know, maybe if I need more of a floor or a ceiling guy in the flex spot, we'll see. Yeah. I was about to ask you what, would Brees Hall's performance dictate um, maybe some of your start sit decisions? Cause it, yeah, Brees Hall was to put up, you know, four points, um, would you feel more obligated to maybe go for a, a home run in your in your flex position? Would you say that? Yeah, side? probably. I, I would. That would definitely influence me to go that way. Um, uh-huh. I don't know. I have to look into it more on like playing like Zay Flowers against Lamar. Like it kind of takes away like one of Lamar's outs almost. Like yeah, make Lamar have to perform well like running the ball or throwing to anybody else which like five of the last six weeks, he's thrown the ball a lot to Zay Flowers. So I don't, I don't know. Yeah. No, understood. Well, Beast, with, with you, um, there's always the the debate, you know, with, with this weekend, are you going one quarterback or two quarterbacks? Um, and then you have a plethora of receivers um, that you have to make decisions on. So as of right now, you have Gardner Minshew slotted in. Um, can you confirm – Gardner will will get the start in the championship game, or or is it possible that uh, maybe one of the receivers will slot in there? Right, and and la- last week, as I say, um, I did not play Minshew last week. Mm-hmm. I played five receivers. Um, I felt going against Brendan that he was going to probably put up his one seventy, and mm-hmm. I had to take a shot at getting as many players as I could up to twenty, and I felt that. Uh, my receivers had a better chance at getting hitting the jackpot and getting to 20 than uh, uh, Minshew did. Uh, yeah. If you look at Minshew's number, you know, he's only like a 14 point kind of guy. Um, and it didn't work out. I actually benched Minshew and started uh, London was my neck, my replacement and London had 6.9 and Minshew had nine. So it cost me a few points, but luckily didn't cost me the game this week though. I'm going back to the two quarterbacks um, because I, I just feel uh, I, I mean, I, I just, I just can't trust Atlanta and throwing the ball to the right people. So I'm going to put Minshew back in and hope mm-hmm. for a big Minshew shootout. And uh, um, you know, and, and that was the other thing I just didn't feel I've watched the Atlanta games because and Atlanta has a great defense and I knew that it would have been tough sledding for Minshew this week against the Raiders, although the Raiders are been crazy good defensively in the last couple of weeks. Yeah, um, against the Chiefs last I, week. Yeah. I, I just feel like it's a game the Colts absolutely need and Minshew better play. And so I'm going with Minshew. So I'm going double quarterback. And hopefully Minshew can put that 20 on the board for me. I like it. No, that's – yeah, appreciate the uh, the insight into two – into the two championship teams and, and how the lineup decisions are are made. Um, if you yeah. if you looked at the coaching stats from this past year, you know, the the dynasty champions might uh, might need some advice on how lineup decisions are made. <laughs> <laughs> I think, well, uh, and I want to say too that okay. one interesting thing about the Beast organization mm-hmm. is it's pretty. You know, we start nine basically nine players and then a kicker and a defense. And my starting nine for like pretty much every year that I've been playing mm-hmm. has been super clear and easy. And Alex gets into a situation where he has legit, you know, he's got like 14 players that, you know, would start on any team. Yeah. And so it makes it, it makes it harder for me. Yeah. It's been pretty easy. I have a pretty clear nine who should go and, uh, and it actually just makes it easier that way. And uh, and I don't know if that has anything to do with my success, but um, mm-hmm. 
uh, very rarely do I ever bench anybody who outscores my starters because I don't really have a, you know, a, a real deep bench. So, um, you know, I don't know what's better to have 14 players you got to run in there or a clear nine, but that's yeah. kind of how I feel is like, I've got a clear nine. Yeah. It's, it's an yeah. interesting dilemma. Um, because yeah, ideally you, you know, you want 25, players on your roster that are that are stars can all put up points but that that adds uh some murkiness in 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 each week and it's be nice to have some clarity um as to who you put out there and you get your superstars and yeah if you have a definitive starting lineup then then that certainly helps it goes a long way yes um, yes i'm gonna here i'm gonna st- st- stop sharing hopefully still recording here yeah, still recording. All right. Well, there is a question uh, from the audience, and and it might you know I'll I'll, I'll translate because the English is a little rough. From uh, so we got Zeke Zeke Boydock in the house, and Zeke had a had a question that he wrote up. Um, and I think a lot of the a lot of the league members are curious about this as well. So let me let me add some, um, let me preface this. So, you know. It is uh it is well known around the league that the green machine, um, they're having they're having a little one here coming up in, in early 2024. And you know, that that also means that the beasts are gonna be uh grandpa beasts. So we're gonna have a new yes. father and a new a new grandpa. And you know, and then then behind me here is uh I guess Uncle Zeke. That's <laughs> right, <laughs> Uncle Zeke. <laughs> um and the thing is, you know, with this this championship, you know, Boydock Bowl two, you know, could this be the end of of both of both Boydocks for quite some time? Because priorities might be might be elsewhere um, before before the next dynasty season starts. So, I think we're all curious. You know, could do you, do you think this could be the end, or or will? Uh, you know, just kind of talk about that balance and green machine. I'll start with you. How are you going to balance between being a dad and, and staying on top of um, the green machine franchise? Cause it, it is a delicate balance and, and you know, where, where are your priorities? You're right. It's a, uh, you know, it's fortunate timing, you know, the baby will come during like draft season. So I'll be able to do a lot of studying you know, maternity leave, feed a bottle, you know, watch some, watch some uh, draft highlights, you know, I'm sure I'll figure out a balance. Um, it'll change. The spreadsheet might not get updated as often, but I'm sure I'll, I'll try and stay on top of it, but yeah, it's, it's going to be different. Um, I'm looking forward to you know, balancing that in the future though. And I'm sure it'll uh, have to tip in the scales of my, my daughter, but um yeah it, it should be good and if i might add uh reese hall did just score a receiving touchdown so oh my goodness breaking good news on there Brees hall already has on the first drive Brees hall already has 32 yards rushing and a receiving touchdown wow it's it's not good. No four points. No four points. And I would have bet. I would have bet anything that this guy's not coming anywhere close to forty this week. But already he's. Uh, that's terrible. Terrible. Good news yeah. for the green machine. <laughs> Thursday anyway, night touchdown. As far as the baby comes. Yeah. That's uh. That actually is kind of my motivation. I really want to win this one for my granddaughter. <laughs> so that when she comes into the wow. world, she knows grandpa is champ. So that's, <laughs> that's one, that's one thing I'm after. And uh, second, as far as affecting me, I'll, you know, I'll do my babysitting and take care of the kid and stuff. But the guy who's going to have to be up in the middle of the night and getting overtired will be Alex. So <laughs> it will affect him much more than it will affect me. The only other bad thing is, is when he's up at 2 a.m. holding the baby, trying to get her back to sleep. He might get those updates on some big NFL news mm. and be the first to act at 2 a.m. when we're all sleeping. It's a good so, point. I don't mm. know how how that how that'll play out, but but anyways, well, we'll said. see. 
<laughs> yeah, I guess I guess the thing is, you know, regardless of the winner, um, you know, how how long after after baby Boydock is born that a picture is taken with the trophy is like who I I, I imagine that right. there's going to be a trophy pick in there pretty soon. And will it be with with grandpa or with dad? We'll find out. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> No, good. It's deal. hopefully yeah. soon. I'm just hoping the the bread, the bread has to bring it up from uh, when he comes up from Texas this week. You know, he's yeah. He's got to be making the trip because it's staying down there. If he had any sense, it was probably already. It was one of the first things packed before yeah. the playoffs even started. <laughs> that's, that's well said. I, I the rumor is the the ride bread organization will be back in St. Louis tomorrow, I believe. Um, so. Yes, yeah, the trophy coming with him. I I would expect that's the case because he no longer uh will have the trophy. So makes makes more right. sense to have it here. And man, oh, I hope it comes home. <laughs> well, good deal. Well, um, few few other questions uh, before we wrap up. Thank you, Zeke, for the for the question there about uh, Zeke. Zeke, Zeke. Uncle Zeke or cousin Zeke. How that works, but um, you know, Alex, I th I think the league is is wondering. You know, a AJ Green has uh has been has been out of out of football, um, and just, just curious, you know, does does this championship run um have anything to do with a AJ? You know, visiting your team, you, maybe you as a coach, you know, giving you advice, your players a pep talk. Um, how how influential has AJ Green been? um been this season for you yeah very it's a it's been quite a season you know he finally retired from the nfl spent a little time helping me with some decisions it's mm -hmm. been a big roster turnover year too you know with like some some og green machine guys her cousins and george kittle off the roster yeah um, traded away for some big pieces so uh yeah it's it's been a changing you know year and uh you know when i win the championship I'll, I'll definitely make sure to dedicate you know some to them because they've they've they put in their time over the last uh 10 years to you know make the green machine organization what it is so that's right well said yeah i knew i knew there was something to it you know there, there had to be a correlation between aj leaving the league and and the and the rise once again of of the green machine organization uh Beast, how for on on your end do you do you think um the Appalachian Trail hike and 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 how and, and you know you you could have been out there with Aaron Rodgers like doing some ayahuasca too you, or you know leave leave that aside if if that's the case but you know just kind of being out in nature do you do you think that helps kind of clear your mind and add add some clarity to your to your fantasy team. Well, you certainly get to, uh, when you're out on the trail, you get to think a lot about where you're at on uh, all kinds of things in your life. And uh, yeah, and as far as the beasts were concerned, yes, I was able to get clarity on the beasts. And that's pretty much where I decided we're going to ride the storm out here with these older players and uh, and just take this this team forward as best we can with what we've got. So um, yeah, there were certainly some thoughts and decisions made on there. And kind of like Aaron Rodgers, uh, to decide not to retire, to keep it going, uh, that's what the beasts have done. But instead of tearing our Achilles, we've finished the season and finished the season strong. So uh, I think it was a good decision to keep riding this team and going for it. That's right. And you, you, know, you talked about weathering, you know, you know, weather the storm. I'm sure there were plenty of storms you actually had to weather out in the Appalachian Trail to help to help make uh make that decision for for your team absolutely absolutely just made us mentally tougher to take on uh the the tribulations and trials of this league uh because we've been through worse on the trail so that's we, right. we can handle it better now <laughs> well said well cool before all right before we wrap up we have to get predictions and the, and predictions for uh, not just your game but uh also for the third place game um and the Waffle House Bowl. Um the Waffle we'll, we'll start we'll start with uh 
Cody, the island against the koalas. Um, who do you guys have? Well, who do you have going to Waffle House, I guess, would be the way to ask it. The winner, the loser. Yeah. Hmm. I would, I would, I, it's tough because Cody's team has performed well the last two weeks. He's, he put up over 150, I think, the last two weeks. And so I think he would have yeah. won the last two weeks. And it's yeah. kind of tough to keep that rolling. Um, but I, I think Cody would get it done and, uh, We'll see the koalas hanging out at the Waffle House at the end of the year. Uh, no Amari Cooper tonight is a, kind of a letdown a little bit for Cody, but I, I saw yeah. him making some waiver wire uh, additions, so he might be able to fill that. Although Amari Cooper might have had a bad game anyways today. Who knows? But Sure. No, it makes sense. Well, koalas, koalas at Waffle House, that's Green Michigan. Beast, how about you? I'm the same. I think Cody wins this one again, even without, without, uh, Cooper and, um, and, uh, and, 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 uh, the koalas are, are in the waffle house, but, uh, I don't know how much that bothers the koalas. He, he likes the waffle house. <laughs> yes. So now the next question will be what will he actually get to 10 waffles and how quickly, because that. That seems like a mountain that I don't even know if if he could climb, but we will find out. And but that's my prediction is that uh, he is he is uh, serving the penalty this year. Look, I'm glad you brought up the ten waffles because I I know I brought this up in the Discord, but look, I had in total eight, and he he claims I I clarified with them in person that he thinks he could do ten in a sitting. Like there's no chance. The big no. waffles. They are big waffles. <laughs> They're so dense. They're so dense. And I, I thought I was done after four personally. And like I, I didn't want to eat another one. Um right. But you know, take take a few hours, you know, when when necessary. And and I'm proud of eight, which I think is one or two more than what Shin Wu had the year before. So I I challenge the koalas to eat more than eight. I Personally, think he's in for a rude awakening if he expects to get ten pretty easy, but we'll we'll see. All right, the third place game. Um, look, I you know before, um, before the heroes went back to their home base in Wisconsin, I told them that I might get an invite to this to this show. But I was thinking about you, know, like you know what, you know this is just this is just for the for the for the championship game, you know, you, you had to earn the right to, to be on this show. So dry bread and, and heroes, you know, sorry, but not, not too sorry. You'll have to, you'll have to watch this and, and enjoy it. Um, but who do you, who do you think comes out on top in the third place game? I'll, I'll start. And uh, I think, uh, I want to say that I think that, um, uh, uh, Dad Prescott and uh, uh, come and and uh, um, C D Lamb mm -hmm. hit hit a, hit a huge week, and and mm -hmm. uh, Purdy gets back out of the doldrums, and I think I think uh, uh, the heroes puts a, a another one another one seventy up, and I don't know that uh, even with Josh Allen and 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 C M C that that the uh, bread gets to one seventy, so I'm going to go with the heroes on this one. And I just want to say one other thing. Hey, Ziki. Hey, Ziki. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I just want to say that I am very happy that I, uh, I, I beat the heroes. Um, well, not, not just because of the beast, but I, I like, I like that uh, when teams get into the playoffs, like for the first time in the new time and all of that, I feel like we need to have a little bit of a break in time. So I'm happy that he came into the playoffs finally, uh, but then also took his first loss because, uh, you know, I think you need to earn some dues before you get to the Super Bowl. Um, and as far as, uh, and that's one thing I want to say about this, this Super Bowl coming up that has me a little concerned that if, if this was uh, Alex's first rodeo, uh, I would be, not so worried i'd be like we can do this because it's just right that uh the experienced mm -hmm. teams get there but now that he's coming in for number three it, it, it uh, he's paid his dues and so 
I don't have that on my side anymore. And, uh, so, so I'm glad that, that, uh, um, I, I didn't let Brendan win, uh, first time around, let him, let him take a couple losses before he starts tasting that victory. And then, uh, of course, I'm really happy that the bread lost because, uh, when we look at overall, and I don't know what the overall playoff wins are in franchise history, but I do know that in playoff Super Bowl appearances, six is the the new high again uh, because we were both five. And so I want to keep those edges over uh, Brad or any other team for that matter. So mm-hmm. that's another reason why I really, really want this is because I, I want to put up a fourth championship to keep Brad one behind me. So I'm thrilled that I'm, it's not the bread and it's not Brendan um, for a couple different reasons. But in that matchup, I'm going to go with Heroes to kind of rebound, put up some points, and uh, and take third place. Boom. There you go. And, and I know I know Ryan would agree with you on being battle tested first. So he he speaks he speaks a lot of a lot of that. But I don't know when when I'm in the championship next year, it's not gonna it's not gonna matter. If that's our first time or not, that's all. It's all well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Green Machine, how about you? Who's who's gonna take take the third place medal, bronze medal? Yeah, I think just to add to what the beast mentioned at the end, I believe Ryan is now eight and eight in the playoffs. Actually, he beat Chris, so he, I think he'd be nine and eight, and then I think the the beasts are like ten and two. If I'm if I'm That's totaling safe. off of Ryan's totals <laughs> correctly, so so the 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 beasts do have the the most wins in playoff history. I've got to but... have I've got to have at least three losses though because I I've lost two Super Bowls, and then last year I lost in the first. You know round. I, I don't think it added it last year. So actually, yeah. Ryan might be eleven and seven. Yeah, Ryan was eleven and seven, so now he's twelve and eight, and you are nine and two. So now you're eleven and no, you're nine and three. So now you're eleven and three. Yeah, I like that. So, so you theoretically tie percentage. Ryan. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. like that. Um, but yeah, I, I just looking at the matchups that both of the teams have, I, I think that Ryan and Brendan's scoring are probably going to be the one of the top score scoring matchups we've had this year. Um. Both of them, you know, you just go down the line of like, you get Stafford against the Giants, Cup against the Giants, and then Lamb and Dak against the Lions should be a high score. And then you got Ryan's got his San Fran guys against Washington. Mm. Um, you know, as long as that game doesn't get too out of hand, they'll probably score a bunch of points. But I, I'm. I'd be pretty concerned to kind of play either of those. I mean, depending on what happens Saturday night, but um, so I, I'm I'm gonna probably have to go with the heroes, squeak one out, uh, but in like a higher scoring, like a 170 to 160 kind of game against the bread. But I'm gonna go with the heroes, kind of sneak, getting their first ever playoff victory. I like it, and I, I'm all for it. I I agree. I I think I'd prefer Brendan. To when he, you know, he had a good, good season, and be nice for him to, to be rewarded getting the getting a bye week, um, and no one, no one ever wants Ryan to win anything, so we'll we'll keep him, we'll keep him in fourth place. Well, cool, and I I have to imagine that each of you think you will win your your respective matchup, or at least or at least say that out loud. Although Beast, you 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 did you did say you would expect to be a double digit underdog. Um, yes, yeah. but I, I have total faith that, uh, you, you know, Shin Wu came out and laid an egg against me. Brennan came out, laid an egg against me. I think it's just my year. And I think, I think Green Machine is going to lay an egg and I'm going to win. <laughs> I might not run up the most points ever in the Super Bowl. It might be 140, 150, but I think, I think, uh, uh, uh Green Machine gets frustrated and gets stuck down there at 130. And and I take my I take my fourth title. Boom! All right, Green Machine. I'm sure you do you agree with everything uh, your pops just said. No, yeah, <laughs> I, I think I think it's just been my year, so I I would love to cap it off with a victory and 
have a trophy, you know, at, at my house to present to my daughter when she arrives as well. So. <laughs> <laughs> Put it up on the fridge with Jamar and, uh, and Joe Burrow and AJ Green. That's right. Join the join the jungle up there. <laughs> exactly. All nice. right. Well, well, cool. Hey, both. Thank you. Thank you so much for for being on on the best show this Gotham City Batman League has to offer. Or oh, is that the, is that the name of our league? <laughs> Gotham City Batman, Batman still right now. Yeah, yeah. Yep. I guess we we might change it. Uh, but no. Thank you both, and congrats on being in the championship. Um, Boydock Bowl two is underway and yeah good good start for the green machine yes um, but cool good good luck this thanks weekend and uh what's that thanks for hosting scott oh yeah no no problem well no problem all that's right. right well thank you very much yeah thanks guys